So here's a quick look at the cargo trailer conversion that I just finished up on. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas if you're looking to do something somewhat similar. We'll start with a quick tour of the outside and we'll just kind of walk around the trailer. So up at the tongue we have a 2 inch ball with heavy duty chains. We also have a 7 pin wiring harness because this does have trailer brakes. And you can see the emergency battery down there so if the uh, trailer ever becomes disconnected it'll automatically engage the brakes. It's an all aluminum uh, built trailer with some nice uh, black powder coated finish and a mist grey design. Coming around to the side here we got our first big window cutout. Aluminum wheels. And around the back we just have a standard cargo door. Nothing too special there. And you'll notice actually on both sides we do have fold down jacks. So that'll uh, help keep the trailer stable whenever you're parked. We have another window there, as well as two exterior lights that are very, very bright. As well as the door here. Now the door does have the standard RV style latch and no ugly bar lock to, to cover it up. We have a nice heavy duty door latch here to keep the door from opening up and slamming around with the wind. And we also have a RV style screen door as well that comes separate, which is really, really nice. I've also wired up, it's kind of hidden down here, an exterior outlet. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the exterior, or to the electrical system. But this is a exterior power out. Actually, I forgot to mention, we also have the power in on the other side, which is just over here. So this is where you would plug the trailer into your generator or whatever power source you have. The internal wiring is uh, done for 30 amps. Under the trailer, we'll take a quick look. You can see the little muffler there. It might be a bit hard as I get under here, but we have the uh, diesel heater down there. So the exhaust, the intake, as well as the fuel for it. Uh, the fuel pump, you can kind of see is up there. And then this is the tank we mounted. So that cap is sealed off and we adapted it to be able to mount it on its side because it's not really designed to be used like that. I'm not sure if you can see, there's a little standpipe there that goes to the fuel pump. So that's what the heater looks like. And then it blows the hot air through this pipe here and up into the trailer. Going a little bit further back around, we'll see the battery and that's mounted just up there with the wires going up through the floor and into the inside of the trailer, which again, we'll look at a little bit more in depth when we get to the inside. And we'll take a quick look at the roof as well. So just moving up on top of the roof of the trailer now, you can see our window AC that's mounted up top there. I actually used the siding from the window cutouts uh, to build the siding for it. Uh, big advantage with these style units being the window units is, well, there's two big ones. The number one reason we did this is because the RV style top mount ones, they're all about eight, 900 watts. Whereas this sips power around 350 watts. So that means I can actually run it off of battery power, which is huge. And the second reason is the RV ones are all eight, 900 bucks. This was 60 bucks off Facebook marketplace. So a big savings there. The only thing we had to do different is because these are designed to be used in a different orientation is the ducting. So that's all hidden behind this little shroud here and I'll throw up a picture so you can see kind of how that's ducted. And then of course we just had to rewire the control panel down to the inside of the trailer so we can have access to that. So we'll head inside the trailer now and take a look inside. We'll uh, see some of the weight savings that I tried to do because this whole thing is being towed by that car over there. So they're trying to keep the weight down with something that was kind of the main idea. So we'll go ahead and step in. And there we have the inside. I have the toolbox in right now. And a little furniture here. So let's start off with the walls. So the walls are just aluminum framing with insulation and some wood panels. They're about maybe an eighth of an inch thick 
um, and they're very lightweight and they have a nice kind of durable finish on them. As far as the seams, it was hard to find edge tape for it, so I ended up using um, edge tape that's for cabinets that you're supposed to use kind of on the edges of cabinets to cover up the edges and it worked really well for this. Uh, we also have some baseboard as well as some crown molding that I put up and that's just to hide the factory wiring. All this furniture here um, I just built by hand with a saw that a buddy had lent me. Uh, it came out quite well. I'm really happy with the color. So I guess we'll just start up in the Vinos and work our way back. So up in the Vinos we have two large overhead cabinets as well as a gear storage area with a little strap that you can easily remove from the side here. The idea with this is you keep your helmet there, your boots, your gloves, all that gear. And then we have two hooks here so you can hang up your suits. As far as the cabinets, they're kind of nice because they have a gas strut in them, both of them. And they're, uh, they're quite spacious inside. Uh, one challenge I had is because I'm using half inch plywood to keep the weight down, all the standard cabinet hinges were too deep, so I had to use these surface mount style ones, which worked pretty well. And then every door here I put on a latch, and that's just to keep it from coming open while out on the road. Moving on down, we have kind of the desk and work area. So we have this kind of weird shape cabinet up here that's a triangle and this one actually was really hard to find hinges for because it's a negative 45 degree angle and I had to get the ones with the cup uh, and I had to kind of shim them and space them because the cup depth is 12 millimeters and my cabinets are 12.7 millimeters so not a lot of room there but ended up working out okay and of course that one has a lock as well so it doesn't come open. Uh, under the desk we have a bit of storage of course and also you can see the vent there for the heater. And up on the top we have a 27 inch monitor that I've done the HDMI cable down through there and it kind of comes out behind this little plant so you can plug in your laptop or whatever you want. Uh, we also have an outlet just behind there if you need to plug in a laptop or something like that. We have the window here. A nice window shade and these are full so it's a little hard to do this one-handed but these are full blackout blinds so if you need to sleep at the track when it's uh, full daytime you can do that and that's on both windows actually I'll close both of them just so you can kind of see how dark it gets in here I don't know how well it will come on the camera but it's uh it's pitch black in here now so these, uh, these blinds do a very good job with that. So moving along the side here, we come to a little control panel area. You can see the controller for the air conditioner, the inverter, and also the little diesel heater here. You can set it up um, by thermostat where it'll try to keep a set temperature, or you can set it up through Hertz mode where it'll just keep going at a constant rate. Uh, moving down a little bit, we have the built into the desk induction plate for cooking as well as a little USB charger that has Qualcomm 3 fast charging. Keep all your devices topped up. And moving a bit to the left, we see we have another cabinet we built up here. So the idea with this is for pots, pans, cutlery, things like that that you'd be using for cooking. Then we have standard microwave. Unfortunately, this does not run off the inverter, so you will need to be plugged into the mains. And the mini fridge with the true dedicated freezer, so you can have ice cream trackside. This one actually runs about 51 hours off of the inverter, which is really quite surprising. I didn't expect it to last that long. We have a 100 amp hour battery, um, as well as some more under floor storage here. So I just used some two by fours here, just to kind of build the frame, and then bolted the fridge to the bottom of it, and it's very, very solid. So let's talk a little bit about that electrical system now. So like I said, we have a 100 amp hour battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate one, which I would highly recommend. I was considering going with a lead acid, but after looking into it a bit more, trust me, you're gonna wanna go with the lithium. And it's a pretty neat system that we have here. You can kind of see a little bit of it down here. Uh, we have the charger as well as the double pole, double throw relay. 
So essentially what this does is it'll automatically switch your 110 whenever you plug in the trailer to a power source. So I'll throw a quick little wiring diagram. It's a very rough one, but of kind of what it looks like. Um, and we'll see if we open the drawer here. Actually, I'll have to take it out. I'll show you the inverter because it's actually back there. So it's all accessible if you need it. Uh, but with this, you always have 110. Either you're plugged in to a power source or it's running off of the battery. And then these are the little drawers that I had built. Uh, with these drawers, I went with soft clothes. And the only reason for that is they offer a lot more resistance when you're opening them so they don't come open while you're out on the road. So I'll pull one out real quick and I'll show you the inverter back there. So I've just removed two of the top drawers here so we can get a closer look at the electrical system. I got a light as well. So you can see the inverter is up at the top there as well as the power cable from the hot plate. I cut out holes as well for ventilation. It does have a little fan that goes. And you can see from the flooring there, we have our two power cables that come up from the battery. And they're really heavy gauge and they go right up directly to the inverter where we also branch off power for the interior and exterior lights. So that's kind of what the electrical system looks like. And now moving along to the back of the trailer, we'll see you have the toolbox in here. Uh, this is actually the color that I tried to match with the cabinets. When I picked out the color for the cabinets, I was trying to match that as best as I could and it worked out pretty well. So we have some meat track here and that's going to be set up for the bed, which I'll show you in a second. And it's also useful for holding on the toolbox, uh, bikes, whatever else you have in here. This is the other side here with some more e-track and you can see the Pitbull TRS plate here. Uh, when I set this trailer up, I did want to have it a bit future proof for two bikes. So there's actually room for another um, e-track or sorry, TRS plate right beside it. And then you can put two bikes in here, but in that case, that toolbox is going to come here, kind of in front of the fridge, uh, perpendicular to the trailer. So I'll move the toolbox out of the way, and we can see kind of what the bed setup it looks like, because that's something that's pretty unique, and I have not seen it before. Okay, so I've gone ahead and mounted the bed frame, and you can see we're using the E-Track. These are some 2x4 holders, and we have the two boards across and now this is the bed setup. So again, because we're toying with a little coop, we wanted to keep the weight down. So I didn't really want to add any hardware uh, for the bed. So I said, well, we already have a ramp door here. Why don't we use it? So to open up the bed, you have two little latches here, which I'll open up. There's one and two. And then let's see if I can do this one handed. This whole ramp, folds down, there's a hinge down there. Kind of like that. And that's it, that's your bed. So behind that white panel, which I just put in just cosmetics, it's just directly the insulation and the framing of the uh, ramp door. And then you have this nice full size bed. It's actually a full size bed, uh, fits a full size mattress and leaves you a little bit of a border. And then it's also a nice little bench on the side here. If you're putting your suit on or anything like that, you have a nice area. And then when you're finished with the bed and you want to fold it up, it's pretty simple. Again, it's best to do with two hands. So this just goes up at the top. And then you have your two latches on either side. And that's it. You take down the wood boards and you're good to go. And you can put a mattress on it or air mattress or whatever you want, as large as you want. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing I think I haven't showed uh, is the venting for the air conditioner. So that's just up at the top here. So that's where the air is getting pulled in and this is where the cold air is coming out. And the idea is it's pointed towards the desk. So if you come in off track right through the door, it's pointed right at you to help cool, cool you off a little. So, hope you guys enjoyed the little video I made. Hopefully it inspired you and gave you some ideas for your own conversion. Uh, it was a lot of fun to build, a lot of work, and I'm looking forward to finally having some uh, ice cream on the truck.